hello students we'll have a discussion about water purification on large scale basically there are two ways of purifying water one is the large scale and the other is the small scale in the large scale method of water purification we relate to water purification from surface water for example a pond or a lake which may cater to the needs of a village or a small town so as we all know there are three steps in the process of water purification the first step is the storage second step is the filtration and the third step is the disinfection so today we'll focus about the method of purification so there are basically two types of purification methods one is called as the slow sand filter or the biological filtration the second type is called as the rapid sand filter or the mechanical filtration so today we'll discuss about the slow sand filter so what exactly is the slow sand filter method so it was first used in the year 1804 in scotland and subsequently in london and during the 19th century it was used across the world in most parts of the countries so it basically consists of a concrete rectangular basin containing selected graded sand which are carefully chosen which is supported on gravel and stones gravel is nothing but a smaller size of stones they look like pebble stones the elements of a slow sand filtration method is supernatant water a sand bed under drainage system and filter controlled valves supernatant water is the water that is stored above the sand bed as the name suggests the water is stored above a particular surface which is called as supernatant water so below this water is the sand bed and under the sand bed is the drainage system which controls the outflow of water after purification and to control this outflow of water there are filter control valves so basically a slow sand filter consists of these four elements this is how ideally a slow sand filter mechanism works which is shown in the slide diagrammatically as we can see that the top layer has the raw water inlet which stores the water that needs to be filtered and the darker one is the filter bed or the sand bed and below the filter bed or the sand bed is the gravel that supports the sand bed or the filter bed the purpose of having support gravel at the bottom of the filtration tank is to see to it that since the small sand particles are easily permeable through the large pipes they will be filtered by the larger size gravel so that after filtration the water will not have any leftover sand particles so that is the basic concept behind having support gravel underneath the sand bed and on the right hand side we can see control valves which is then leading to a tank that comprises of the treated water so again we can see a word by a name schmutztech here we'll discuss what exactly is the schmutztech layer and the height or the depth of the raw water will be about 1 to 1.5 meters and the height or the depth of the sand bed or the filter bed is about 1 meter and about 30 centimeters will be the support gravel 
So coming to the supernatant water that lies above the sand bed. So it provides a constant head of water to overcome the resistance of the filter bed. This promotes the downward flow of the water through sand bed. So the main purpose of the supernatant water is to have an adequate depth so that the pressure of the water enables easy flow of this water through the sand bed. Another component of the supernatant water is that it provides a waiting time or a waiting period of 3 to 12 hours for the raw water to undergo partial purification by sedimentation and oxidation. So as we know, storage itself purifies the water to a maximum extent that is nearly about 90%. So even before the filtration method could start, the storage also helps in partial purification of the water by sedimentation, which also produces oxidation. The next is the graded sand. This is the most important part of the filter. The thickness is about one meter or the depth or the height of the sand bed or the graded sand is about one meter. So it has to be preferably rounded with an effective diameter of 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters, which is then supported by graded gravel for about 30 to 40 centimeters deep. So here the water percolates through the bed and gets filtered. So how does the filtration occur? Through mechanical straining, through sedimentation, there is also adsorption, there is oxidation and also bacterial action. So these five processes are evident in slow sand filtration method. It is not just mechanical filtration. So apart from mechanical straining, we also can see oxidation or bacterial action as well. So we have a mix of physical, chemical and biological reactions. Here the rate of filtration of water is just about 0.1 to 0.4 liters per hour per meter square of the size of the filtration tank. So bigger the tank, more will be the purification per hour. So next is the vital layer. The reason why it is called as the vital layer is evident from the explanation that I give now. So this is called as the heart of the slow sand filter. Here the surface of the sand bed gets covered with a slimy growth known as the smudge stick which is also called as the vital layer or the zoological layer or the biological layer. So as we can see in the diagram, just between the intersection above the sand bed and below the water is the smart stick layer. It is a slimy growth. So what slimy growth is it? It is gelatinous in nature. It consists of algae, planktons, diatoms, and bacteria. So this formation of the layer is known as ripening of the filter. Just like how fruits ripen themselves. This layer over a period of time develops on the sand bed. So when this layer is developed, it means that the filter is feasible for a biological filtration which is known as the ripening and this may take about few days to develop just two to three centimeters of this layer the importance of this layer is that it removes organic matter it holds back the bacteria it oxidizes ammonical nitrogen into nitrates and it yields a bacteria free water so whatever organic matter is in the raw water will be removed by this layer and it also holds back all the bacteria most of the bacteria by this layer 
and it oxidizes ammonical nitrogen which is usually seen in the sewage water so just in case the raw water is mixed with sewage water or fecal matter contaminants that will be eliminated through oxidation into nitrates so please keep in mind nitrates are very helpful in purifying the water so this yields a bacteria free water so until the layer is fully formed the filter only works as a mechanical strainer so for the first few days the importance of a slow sand filter is minimal only for the mechanical purposes next is an under drainage system which has perforated pipes or porous pipes at the bottom of the filter which provides an outlet to the filter water and also supports the filter medium so there is a system of filter control valves called as the venturi meter which is the regulation system this maintains a constant rate of filtration and it also measures the resistance of the sand bed or the loss of head so loss of head is nothing but when the sand bed resists the flow of water downwards we call it the loss of head so this requires remanipulation of the entire sand filtration contents so loss of head is extremely important to be recorded in slow sand filtration so next is the filter cleaning method when the bed resistance increases to such an extent that the regulating valve has to be kept fully open it means or it indicates that filter bed needs to be cleaned so here what happens after repeated filtration naturally the sand bed resistance increases and when it comes to a time when the regulatory valve or the control valve has to be kept fully open it means that the filter bed needs to be cleaned the reason being because of the filtration process the sand bed would have been collaterally contaminated with the remnant particles of the raw water so how do we do the cleaning so by draining all the supernatant water and by scraping the top portion of the sand bed to a depth of 1 to 2 cm so then again the loss of head can be eliminated by this process but after 20 to 30 such scrapings a new filter bed is required to be constructed so what are the advantages of slow sand filtration method it is very simple to construct and it is cheaper to operate here we see physical chemical and bacteriological quality of water to be at highly acceptable standards this method reduces the bacterial count by almost 100% including e coli so what are the disadvantages it is an old fashioned or an outdated method of water purification but it is still used because it is very effective in water purification on a large scale the initial cost is low undoubtedly but the maintenance cost is high and when it is compared to the rapid sand filter it is much higher and these filters need a lot of space so this is about slow sand filtration in the next session we will learn about the rapid sand filtration thank you